welcome to Blackpool for the World 8 Ball Pool Championships. Teams and players from across the globe have come to the Imperial Hotel to showcase their talent and in the process try for a shot at the world titles on offer. Two weeks of action-packed pool saw England take on Ireland in the men's team tournament and it was the Lions who roared their way to victory by eight frames to five. And the women's singles title was taken by Scotland's Sue Thompson who defeated England's Sharon Wright. Thompson making it world title number 11 in the process. This week though, it's the men's singles final as England teammates Lee Kendall and John Rowe put aside their allegiances as they battle it out to be crowned king of world eight ball pool. This fantastic event is gaining in popularity year on year and here's the World 8-Ball Pool Federation's Vice President George Harwood to tell us more. I think these World Championships will grow and grow. Any sport that grows the way we are is, is fantastic and, and, and when we think that this year is record numbers, we do two events, we do the World Championships, we do another event called World Masters and in both cases and in all categories we have a record number of participants this year. There's various games in life where people become the top players. If you're at one of the bottom players, it isn't quite as much fun as being like the winner. With pool, you can be the winner, you can be number one, and, that, and that, the level there is as equally to any other level of any other sport. But the good thing, in, particularly on eight ball pool, is it's so easy to play, so you, you can enjoy it. We are probably bigger than any other Q sport game in terms of participation because it's so easy to play and we have got over two million players playing this game and we are in my opinion a great avenue for hitting a lot of the uh, the people out there and uh, I'm looking for sponsorship going forward. I want to make sure everyone enjoys the sport that's that's our objective. It's a great sport, it's a great entertainment. So then, down to the business of deciding this year's men's singles champion as England team captain Lee Kendall takes on fellow international John Rowe. The two are great friends and roommates, but all of that has been put aside as they get ready for the biggest match of their careers. John Rowe was the first man into the final as he swept aside the Welsh wonder kid Tom Price. A 10-4 demolition job in the end by Rowe who was in total control of the match from start to finish. Next to book his place was Lee Kendall who overcame another young gun in the form of England's Giuseppe D'Imperio. Kendall making it to the top table, throwing the second time in his career. John Rowe won the lag and with it the right to break in the first frame. It's a best of 21 match, which means the first to 11 will be crowned champion. And your commentators for this one are Keith Brewer and Dave Hendon. Well, since they arrived in Blackpool, John Rowe and Lee Kendall have been sharing a hotel room. Of course, only one of them can take away the trophy. This is what it's all been about. The final, first to 11 wins. John Rowe in the final for the first time in his career, Lee Kendall for the second. A lot of pressure, Keith, on both of their shoulders here. Big occasion. Yep, it sure is. But it's also one that we'd all like to be in. As players, this is the one we all want to win. Red ball's nominated. It's a good break to start off with, and I would say straight away that the Reds are the favourites here. The fact that all these yellows are tied up next to the black spot seems to dictate your choice of suit. And both of the semi-finals though, Dave, I, I did notice that uh, the players did miss the odd shot and took time to settle. I'm just wondering, you know, with the final, whether they'll just come out full guns blazing and there'll be a lot of respect out there between these two guys. They'll know that to get off to a good start is absolutely critical. What they've got to do as well is forget the, their friends because uh, that's not going to play a part. Both badly want to win. Can't afford to have any mercy out there, any sympathy for your opponent. Well, 
left himself a very difficult shot. Any kind of combination shot's difficult enough, but certainly when there's about three or four feet between the, the two object balls, then it's virtually impossible. <laughs> well, that's Lee Kendall's son <laughs> making his uh, presence felt. No doubt who he's supporting. Well, the thing for Lee here really is he needs to develop the three yellows that are near the black spot. So here we go, straight in. And he's a little bit unlucky because he's finished, I think, touching ball. Touching ball. <coughs> yes, it's been called by referee Richard Rhodes. Not what he wanted, but of course when you've got a touching ball you can now just play away. You must hit a cushion. But of course you, if you uh, can see a little area where you can park the cue ball, it's not going to help your opponent whatsoever. And it makes that shot a little bit easier. Okay, what try Lee was trying to do there was actually trying to get that yellow over the pocket where the red is to gain the upper advantage in this frame. Because it is going to go slightly tactical by the looks of it. The fact that we've got this little cluster near where the black spot is. So that's what he was trying to do there. Not quite worked out. Slight misjudgment and he's gone and put the yellow safe on the cushion. That's a good opening pot there from John. <coughs> Needed to leave an angle as he cuts this red back into the right hand middle pocket. Wants to try and get round the back of these two reds because they both pot into the top right hand pocket. So if he can just get the cue ball in behind them. Yeah, this looks good. Still plenty of work to be done here. Certainly getting on the red just below the black is going to be very difficult. And that might not be the worst thing in the world. Because although he played to pot it, the yellows are far from easy here. Tent start then. That's not unexpected. This is the biggest day of the year for these guys, the World Championship final, particularly as neither has won it before. So there's a big prize for one of them and big disappointment for the other. Good safety from Lee there. What he's managed to do is develop the bad yellow and make sure he didn't leave his opponent on any pot on the red. John's going across the table here to hit the red and he's trying to get the pocket. He needs to hit a cushion and he has. That's fine. But he doesn't look happy about it. He may have left a gap for the yellow there to go through. But looking at the yellows, you wouldn't say there's an easy finish on for Lee. Certainly the top end of the table there. He's got a very bad yellow that he's got to deal with. made the pot but surely he's not going for the finish here he's got the, the yellow tied up with a black he's got the yellow at the top right hand corner that doesn't pot now what he may be able to try and do here is try and wedge this yellow in front of the red into the pocket 
but the way he's playing it, he's definitely screwing back, so he's going to try and develop the one by the black. Not really what he wanted. Yeah, I could see the shot, I could see the developing shot. But unfortunately, it still doesn't pot. He's kind of got to the stage where he's committed, though. So really, he hasn't got much of a defensive shot on. If he wants to carry on attacking, of course, he has got the double now, straight into the middle pocket, with this most awkward of the yellows. But the problem is, what does he do next? <coughs> Elected for the cut down the cushion. <coughs> I can only imagine that the way he's played it, he was open really to wedge that in the pocket. It's <coughs> really, he's just left, left red, an easy finish now. These, of course, are the opening salvos in this final. It's first to 11. But even so, both players looking to settle, get a frame on the board early on. John Rowe has a chance to do that now. that could have been better as well he wanted to be really kind of high on this red of course as he pots it the white will naturally be going away so it makes it more difficult to get on the black of course another way he can play it is to pot the red and cannon into the yellow and black or he can try and cut it extra thin and try and hold for the middle pocket well that's what he's tried to do as you can see, it was always going to be difficult. I think it does cut in. But wow, this is a tough shot. Well, he's played very confidently all the way to the final. But he's always going to be tough against Lee Kendall. This is a tough black to win the opening frame. But he's potted it, and the cue ball just stays out. So John Rowe leads the final 1-0. Yes, not easy this, and the white was very close to following the black in. But it stayed out, and the frame is his. So John Rowe draws first blood in the opening frame, making his own luck on the black. Join us after the break for more action from the men's singles final at the World 8 Ball Pool Championships right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the World 8 Ball Pool Championships. Lee Kendall is at the table and has the break for frame two in this race to 11 in the men's singles final. Your commentary comes from Keith Brewer and Dave Hendon. Good friends, these two, but here on the table in Blackpool today, of course, deadly rivals. Lee Kendall, his break shot has worked really well throughout the tournament. <coughs> Seems to have really perfected it, particularly in the semi-final against Giuseppe Di Imperio. And it will be a factor, I'm sure, again today. Win or lose. Well, it certainly worked there because that's an excellent break once again from Lee. And as I said before, you know, both sets are there, whether you want to go reds or yellows. The yellows it's going to be. Seems to be a little distraction in the audience. Well, it's put him off, hasn't it? It's so important in this game to concentrate, shut out everything that's happening around you. It's just amazing when you're out there because you're so focused and concentrating on what's going on and any little distraction 
and you can hear it. Particularly in a sport that demands silence. You know, even if someone's trying to get a bald sweet out of a rapper, it can put you off. I suppose the only, only consolation is that the yellow that he's missed has actually covered up the red. So he's, yellows are still in a very good position here. And I, feel, I still think it pots. So if it does pot, then the yellows are on here. He can still clear up. As I thought, this yellow clearly does pot. Because if it didn't, there would be no point in leave hot in the other one over the pocket. He'll just be so pleased to get back to the table after the initial mess. That's the thing, if he were to win the frame from this position, he would put that miss, that distraction out of his mind. If he uh, somehow slipped up again, though, it might still be on his mind when the next frame began. Well, if that yellow pot's in the middle, it's a great shot. Of course, if it doesn't, it's a bad shot. Well, the audience... I think it's a good shot, they applauded. Seconds. Well, not only did he finish on it, of course, he's finished in prime position as well because he was able just to roll it in to be on the next yellow and again just to stun back for the next yellow. Decided not to do too much. He could have screwed that back another couple of inches to be perfect, but this is still missable now. Not that I expect him to miss it. Well, it wipes its feet a little bit, but it's there. Yes, yeah, a good effort that in the end from Lee Kendall to draw level in this world final. One frame all. Well, I think we all thought it would be close. I'm sure John Rowe expected a tough battle here against his roommate. And we'll level uh, after the first two frames. It's first to 11 who will join the Roll of Honour in this great event. <laughs> just at the last moment, that yellow went in, just caught the cue ball. He'll take it. Well, I think it's a contrast, isn't it, in this final to see two completely different breaks. Uh, obviously, Lee's sticking with the cut break with lots of control on the cue ball, etc. But for John, he's going more for the power break, which is what most of the top players do. Red balls in play. And the rewards are he's made a ball and they're all there. Of course, Quinton Han from Australia, former winner of this tournament, he used to play that break-off shot in snooker. Not advisable in that game, but uh, Quinton gave it a go. Did pop the odd one, in fairness, from the break. Well, I can remember the days laying the old rules, and we used to break off at pool like the break-off at snooker. Of course, these days... It's much more attacking on the break shot. 
we have to make four balls at a cushion on the break. So you're not going to see any tap breaks at this game. Well, we've seen right the way through the tournament how important the break-off is. It's all about making it count, though. Ball goes down, yes, but then you've got to do all the rest of the work. That's what John Rowe is attempting to do here. And win the frame in a single visit. In daily life, John Rowe works for a double glazing firm. Dare I say, today this is his window of opportunity to become world champion. He stood up to the general pressure of this tournament really well. Of course, he beat the top seed, Gareth Hibbert, 8-3 in the last 16. And he's played his natural game throughout, he's not compromised it. He's up for the challenge today, no doubt about that. Can't do better than that, he's cleared from the break, he's back in front at 2-1. couple of mistakes on either side in the first two frames, no mistakes there from John Rowe, Lee Kendall, a spectator throughout, but of course it's uh, his break coming up now in frame four. Eleven frames needed, remember, to become world champion here in Blackpool, full house, savouring the atmosphere and the pool as well, and wondering all of them who's going to come out on top. Break, trailing two frames to one, time running. Well, again, from the Kendall break, a ball goes down. Seen that happen time and time again in this tournament. This time, though, is a little bit of work to do from the initial break. noticeable not a ball even near a cushion so really once you choose your suit you should be looking to take out the finish okay we've decided on reds first pot's probably very crucial here Well, there's a little bit of pressure on that first shot, really. When you're bridging over another ball, it's very easy to put the touch aside on. I missed the pot. These two may well bring out the best in one another today. It's a strange position for them to be in. They share a room. They would normally be cheering their friend on, but uh, you just got to set that to one side, be professional, which of course they both are. Concentrate on the job in hand, which is to win. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. Uh, there's been a number of times that we all have to play our friends, our teammates, etc. And really, you've just got to be ultra professional in your approach to the game. You want to win. While you're at the table, you're basically gladiators and you've got to fight it out. Of course, here today, there is just so much at stake. The biggest prize of all.
Now, if he hasn't finished on this red, this is where I would be ultra critical and said, you don't have to play a cannon. <coughs> but if he's played it perfect, well, he hasn't. He needs to put a touch aside on this. What it does is it deviates the red to the other side and it will go in. Doesn't need to hit it too hard. Well, this final well and truly hotting up. John Rowe has just cleared from the break to win the third frame. Lee Kendall has returned the favour to win the fourth and we're level again at two frames all. Both players giving as good as they get in the opening frames here in this final. A great clearance from Kendall to level the match at two frames apiece. Join us after the break for continued action from the World 8-Ball Pool Championships right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the World 8-Ball Pool Championships here in Blackpool. We rejoin the action in frame 13 in the men's singles final. John Rowe currently has a two-frame lead over Lee Kendall and it's row to break. Let's get straight to your commentators, Keith Brewer and Dave Hendon. So John Rowe, four frames away from becoming world champion. And the nerves will be starting to grow, obviously, the closer he gets to the winning line. That's why Lee Kendall wants to keep it as close as he can. Red Bulls nominated. <coughs> Red Bulls in play. Well, certainly the reds are much better than the yellows in this particular frame. You could say there's a little bit of work to do, of course but they all pot without having to develop any other balls. So it's a matter of cue ball control from here. <coughs> well, he's on arguably the most difficult red now, which is the one on the side cushion. I would imagine he's going to take this shot on now. Well, it did rattle, but in it drops. That's the hard putt done for me. This should be clinical stuff from here. Obviously, the red up the top left of the table is going to be the one to get on the black because the black does pot in the middle. So it's a matter of just taking these two out and leaving the right angle to go up for the last red. This is the seventh time he's broken in the match and it would be the fourth time that he'd won the frame from the break. That's impressive. Well, he's left this little angle on purpose because obviously what he wants to do is make sure he pots this with a touch of side, just comes back out for the black, and there we are. Yes, it's another great clearance from John Rome for the first time in the final. He's three frames ahead now. He leads 8-5. Well, I guess that puts a bit of pressure on Lee Kendall's break coming up. He's uh, from the break off, he's won two frames so far. John Rowe, four. Kendall, three frames behind. Rowe getting closer to the title. Well, once again, cut break, ball in. 
How many times have we seen that in the semi-final and final of this tournament? He really has found something extra special there. Anyway, now he's done that part of the equation. The next part is just simply to put all the rest of them. Decided it's going to be reds and probably this is the hardest shot first. Well, it did just touch the pocket going in, but because he played it at the right weight, the pocket said yes. Well, we know that Lee Kendall's got bags of experience, bags of determination as well. He's won so many titles, but still looking to land the big one. You'll know there's no room for error as well on this finish. Got to make it stay in this match. And because he's had such a good break, there's really not been too much to do here. These are like basic control shots with the cue ball. And so far he's played them all perfectly. Well, he's getting towards the stage of the final where he really can't afford too many more mistakes. This is the perfect response after the way John Rowe won the previous frame from his break-off. High standard in this final. Lee Kendall has waited 15 years to appear in a second world final. He was never going to lie down. Far from it, in fact. Terrific clearance from Kendall. He's right back in contention. John Rowe now leads eight frames to six. John Rowe was undeterred by Kendall's efforts as he took control of frame 15. Superb cue ball positioning, allowing Rowe to clear up and put himself 9-6 ahead, just two frames away from victory. We rejoin the match at the start of frame 16. Kendall with the break, Keith and Dave with the commentary. Lee Kendall just trying to make this a bit closer. Stop John Rowe getting to 10, because of course then he'd be just one away from winning it. Well, this time nothing down from the Kendall break. He looks at the table with a little concern there. Just when you need your break to work, isn't it? It's been working the whole tournament for him. And then all of a sudden... Well, we'll find out a lot about John Rowe in the next few frames. Can he kill the final off? You couldn't blame him if he got nervous with the winning line in sight. But he's killed the matches off to get here pretty well throughout the tournament. It's what he's been dreaming of, just being in the final. But, of course, uh, winning it really is the icing on the cake. Well, he's had easier finishes, that's for sure. Well, well, you still fancy him to get it, but there's still a little bit of work to be done with this one. about perfect I would say well who knows how John Rowe is feeling inside but outwardly he's looked very calm in this match and again in this visit
this black and he's one away from victory. John Rowe, four clear, one more frame and he will be world champion. Rowe looks unstoppable and Kendall is feeling the heat. More world-class eight ball pool action right here on Sky Sports after the break. Welcome back to Blackpool for the World 8-Ball Pool Championships. Lee Kendall has control of the table in frame 17 and is on yellow. So let's get straight to your commentators, Keith Brewer and Dave Hendon. Well, we've reached the position in this final where Lee Kendall really just can't afford to miss. Can't afford any more mistakes. Four down with five to play. Well, I can tell you something right now, Dave. If there's any guy that believes he can still win a match from this position, you're looking at him right now. Because this guy won't give up. Critical that obviously he finishes from here. A couple of important shots to play. 8 shot from Lee. Knew that was a vitally important shot. And he'll know better than anybody. Once he gets this frame on the board, sends a message to his opponent. Yes, all he can hope to do in this position is pile the pressure on and see how John Rowe responds. It's all New to row, being in a world final, leading the final like this. He knows it's not over yet. Lee Kendall has been a great servant of this sport down the years. He was never going to throw the towel in. And he's still in there fighting. This final isn't over yet. John Rowe now leads 10-7. And as I say, Kendall just looking to pile the pressure on. Keep John Rowe in his seat. Keep him looking at the scoreboard. It's not over till it's over. But Rowe still needs one, so Kendall still up against it as he breaks here in frame 18. Well, that's the first part of the equation. He's broke off, he's made a ball. Now, how does the land lie? This is one of them where you want them to be just nice rollings, but because where the cue ball's gone, he's got no easy shot here, and he'll be very disappointed with that. Yes, yeah, just wanted to get on a ball there. Just saw him. Didn't thump the table. I've seen that happen in snooker sometimes. Only ever one winner in that scenario, but he was disappointed. Wanted to keep the momentum going after winning that last frame with a good clearance. Open table. Well, obviously felt there was no point in going for a finish, and to be honest, he didn't have a lot of options there. He can't afford to push the boat out too much. But as I said, very disappointed with the break. Made a ball, but just didn't finish well with the cue ball. Now, of course, it's an open table, so John can afford to have a go here. And dare I say it, he could take on the long red up the cushion. If he nails it, he's got a, a chance. It depends how he feels here, Dave. Well, there's your answer, Keith. And we saw in his semi-final against Tom Price, he tried to kill that off as soon as he could. Seems to be same tactic here. Terrific pot. I know there wasn't a lot Lee could do from there, but he just left him that one opportunity, hasn't he? And, well, this is it. This is his chance. 
Well, I think it's encouraging for his supporters that he's trying to win the match rather than trying not to lose it. As you say, he's earned his chance here. Let's see how he does. Well, if he's going to make the finish on this visit, obviously he's got one huge obstacle because one of the reds is well hidden down below the black there. But he has got a couple of reds to play off to try and get on that or maybe even develop that at some stage. And this is where one of them situations comes in. You're trying to work three or four shots in front. He's got a few options. The one he was looking at there is to clip the ball in, cannon the black down and try and develop that awkward red. I don't really think that shot's on now. He's got a nice angle on this red though, he can do all sorts of things. And there we go, there's the cannon, perfectly played. And you have to say, Dave, the writing is on the wall now. Just got to hold himself together and he'll be the winner. What uh, moments these are for John Rowe. Well, I just think he played it in a very well controlled manner. A controlled cannon. He knew he weren't going to lose the cue ball or anything like that. And that's really all you want, just an opportunity at this stage. And although he's slightly low on this red, that's where he needs the cue ball. Just screw into the middle of the table. There's a window there for the cue ball to go through. And of course then the black is waiting. So it's all on this shot. And that looks pretty good to me. Well, he came to Blackpool as one of the outsiders. Beat the top seed, Gareth Hibbert, in the last 16. He's been confident, he's been positive throughout. He believed he could win this. And if he pots this black, he has done. The greatest day of his life. John Rowe beats his good friend Lee Kendall. 11 frames to seven. He is the 2012 World 8 Ball Champion. And that is a pot he will never forget. So John Rowe is number one. He's the king of World 8 Ball Pool for 2012. Heartache for Lee Kendall, who misses out on the title for the second time in his career. Confirmation then of this year's singles championship results. Rowe and Kendall were imperious in their respective semi-finals, but it's Rowe who's gone all the way despite the best efforts of Kendall. Let's hear from a very relieved champion. I don't know how I got through it really. I was, the further it went on, I just, you know, I just wanted to keep potting and try and keep going. And did you let yourself believe at any point that you had this and it was going to be your championship? I was trying not to, but I sort of knew I started to play quite well and I, you know, I just wanted the chance to win and in the end I just thought I've got to try and take a chance to win and you know, luckily it paid off for me. Now, were there any shots you, that you thought were wrist shots that worked for you tonight or, or others you thought might have cost you? Um, around sort of when I, I could have run 6-3 up I think and then I've not got a position and when I went in the interval I was happy to be 6-4 because I thought it could have been 5 all, and I thought that was quite a big turning point around there and you know, that, so I just, I was just glad it, glad it went in how it did and then I come out and still managed to keep playing okay and in the last frame I just had a shot I thought I've got to take it on because it's a chance to win and I got it luckily so I got it. Now what does it mean for you to be champion? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yeah. <laughs> no I'm just, I'm really, uh, I'm just pleased I played well you know because I played terrible with the team and nearly let the team down so to, to come out and actually play well was a great feeling. A few celebrations then later on? Um, I'm not allowed to swear, obviously, but... <laughs> yeah, there probably will be. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations, deserved winner. Thank you very much. Cheers. That concludes our coverage of this year's World 8 Ball Pool Championships from the Imperial Hotel here in Blackpool. Congratulations to John Rowe, Team England, and, of course, Sue Thompson, who lead with this year's titles and those all-important bragging rights. Thanks for your company at these World Championships. We'll leave you with some memories of another phenomenal event, and we'll see you again next year.